So you might think that Tears of the Kingdom has 27 zona devices that you can use to build awesome vehicles and explosive mechs. What many people don't know is that there is over a hundred unique devices hidden all over Hyrule that can help you with your builds. Some are purely cosmetic, others have actual features, and then there are some that you can use to not reach the 21 part limit so quickly. In this video I will show you the most important ones, how to get them, and some possible ways to use them. Subscribe to the channel if you want to support me, and without further ado, let's get into it. The two items that probably everyone knows by now are the motor and the turbine. Not only are they fully functional, but they don't use any zonai charge. Instead, they are powered by electricity. So depending on your spacing when building, you can charge as many turbines as possible with one single shock emitter. I also recommend experimenting with using wheels instead of motors for the turbines. In some builds, this is much more efficient. You get both of these in the Gamemic Shrine, right after entering it, they are the first things you find. Now the next item can actually be paired with the motor and the turbine. It is an electric battery that you can charge with a shock emitter. It can then be used to have your motors move when they are not directly powered by shock emitters. This can for example be used to have the motors active while your build itself is turned off. You find the battery in Mogawak Shrine. Now one of the really unique ones is the ladder. It has three distinct features that no other item in the game has. You find it in this well right here that is next to Ribone Bridge, quite close to the god landing. Now one significant feature is that the ladder behaves rope-like and it is not static like every single other device. Another one is that it is interactable and behaves like an actual ladder. However, the last unique thing is that it instantly despawns when you auto-build it. So until somebody finds a workaround for that, or finds a way to get the original ladder out of the well, we won't be able to use it for now. It is kinda funny, even if you help the guy to get out of the cave, it looks like his ghost still chastises you when you try to get it out of there. One funny one is the backpack. Sadly, this is purely cosmetic of course, but it might add flavor to a build that is survival or camping themed. To get this one, you have to take a pesky creature, a Korok, and attach it to something. Then just save it in auto build and when you rebuild it, only the backpack and the attached item appear. Which is a good thing, we do not need any more Koroks. A great item to save on parts is a wagon with wheels, that you can find at the East Akala stable. It counts as one part, which makes it very good as a chassis. The wheels have axes, so you can actually use steering to move them. And while we are on items that are pre-built and let you save on parts, there's two rafts that you can get. One of them is part of the quest at Redland Stable. For this you have to have started the newspaper quest line, which is needed to unlock most stable quests. Once you have started Penn's quest, just head to the river and talk to the boatman. Once you've told him why you are here, you can start building with the raft and save it onto auto build. The other raft is quite similar, but is found at the Tarn Point cave at the south side of the Telos Plateau. They both feature a cute seat. And to stay on water related items, there is a beautiful boat chassis that can be found on this small island in the southeast of the map. You find a sail north of this place at the shore, but sails are more common than boats anyway. Now having a good chassis for your build can be easy or hard, depending on your use case. There's many different ones, with different weights and different properties like being conductive or having a unique form. This non-conductive chassis is interesting, as it has a unique form and is actually very lightweight. This one is great for flying machines due to the weight and offering you easy spots to place diagonal fans. You get it inside the Marakagak shrine and can just fuse it to a weapon. Conductivity can be important though, for example in builds that use the previously mentioned motor. There are various different wire meshes in the game. In Makasura Shrine you can find ones in different shapes, one being a board with a bowl and the other having that L form stand. An extra large wire mesh can be found inside Ihin R Shrine. All of these are fusible. Another conductive one I found is this lattice that can be found on top of the Wind Temple. I like this one, because you can travel here and don't need to enter another shrine and see another loading screen before getting it. One of the best looking chassis for ground vehicles is the Yiga truck chassis. It is found at this location in the depths, and sometimes you see Yiga driving around in trucks that you could take apart to get this piece. The Yiga are a good source of unique parts in general, as I like to tinker as much as I do. In their bases you often find these sort of spiked metal plates. They do damage when moving fast enough, so you can either use them as ramps or put them on a wheel and bulldoze your enemies. Besides the spiked metal plates, the headquarters of the Yiga have this fairly unique car, called the Gloom Dredger. One can be found at the abandoned Luralin mine in the depths, but besides that, the only way to obtain the one from inside the base is to buy it off of the Yiga engineer for 1000 rupees. An absolute scam, but what can you do? Another unique item that doesn't have a specific use yet, but will definitely come in handy sooner or later, are these locks. They are the second largest item in the game, which will definitely help you save on parts. It can be found east of Rito village in the Tabanta village ruins. Just break these leafless trees with an axe or any sharp weapon and either fuse or auto build the lock. And to stay on locks, Tajikat's shrine features a lock that has a regular lock size but looks quite nice. 
so if you care for optics, definitely switch your basic locks out with these ones. The previously mentioned lock is in size only topped by this absolutely massive stone box. You find it in Ottak Shrine and can fuse it to a weapon. The entrance to the shrine is in a cave right here. Just make sure to beat the shrine first so you get your gear back and then fuse it. We won't though, it is a pain in the butt to build with this piece. This next item is one of few Zonai items that cannot be destroyed. This counts for both regular attacks and the device destroying scream that bosses like to use. It is a stone loop that you can find in the right leg depot in the depths. The following three items are undoubtedly the coolest looking items in the game. The Leviathan skeleton. It consists of the skull, the torso and the tail. These are sure to make all of your builds 300% more menacing. To get the skull you have to start a quest with Loon right here northeast of East Akala stable. She offers three quests and for each she marks the location where you have to fix the skeleton. On the third quest that leads you to Southwest Gerudo, you find the three parts in a cave. The skull only spawns when you start the quest, the other two parts can be obtained without the quest. One rather useless item are Ruins Rubble. I have no idea what to use it for as it is fairly heavy and doesn't really look enticing. But as it is quite unique I wanted to mention it anyway. There is a big and a small version, you can get both on the way up to the water temple. Now definitely the most attractive and handsome build item is this. The Hudson Cutout. It can be great for giving your build that final missing piece to make it look Hudson approved. Or if Link feels lonely on his vehicle, you can make it look less lonely to him. Or if you are an evil person, you can use these as target practice. But I don't know who would disrespect our overlord like that. To talk about the smallest donor device with an actual use, we have candles. These burn infinitely, don't cost battery and actually help the balloon rise into the air making them great for cheap and simple balloon machines. One of the shrines you can get them in is the Zinakawa shrine. These are also fusible. Speaking of balloons, the balloon chassis is a great lightweight part too. Usually you only find them pre-attached to balloons. But one standalone chassis is found in the depths next to Jaduka Car Light Route. If you haven't unlocked that one yet, enter the depths through the chasm southwest at the Great Plateau. One very interesting piece is this wooden board combo that is part of the rail vehicle at Terrytown. Its unique property is that it consists of two L-shaped wooden boards that are connected in the middle through a wire mesh. This mesh however does not have a hitbox, so it is essentially two wooden boards connected through the air that count as one item. To use it you have to use auto build. I'm quite sure I managed to get the original item once, but I cannot replicate it. If you find out how, let us know in the comments. Another great looking item is the eye of the Bargainer statue. It is found right here in the pond next to the Great Plateau North Chasm. However, it also comes with major caveats. It cannot be fused, but can be auto-built. However, when auto-built, it loses a unique glowing eye effect, which makes it much less attractive. And you can only move around freely with it when you are inside the depths. So it definitely helps for a great looking depths build, but when you try to move it on the surface, it will respawn where it came from. Two other items with unique properties are the floatables. Both a floatable board and a floatable ball exist, and can both be found at the same place. For these, just head to Jonsai Shrine in the wetlands, to the east of the wetland stable overlooking the shallow waters. They can be great for water vehicles, but it should be noted that they are heavier than they look. They are just coated to float on top of water. Metal bolts of various sizes exist and can also be somewhat practical in builds. While they are heavy, they conduct electricity and are perfectly shaped to for example be used as a ball vehicle. You can find these inside Iwun Orok Shrine. The shrine has three different sizes of metal bolts, but I'm fairly sure even more exist. Also, at Hyrule Field Skyview Tower you can find a spiked version that does damage. The next device has a very very unique shape. It is a lift that is part of a gondola inside Susuyai Shrine. The cool thing about the shape is that it has a small space that can be used as a cockpit for Link or to mount weapons or other parts inside. It is fusible so it is fairly easy to pick up. If you've been hunting for Koroks, you probably came across one of these metal objects that exist in various shapes. These can freely be built with, but you should be warned, once you solve the Korok puzzle, the item will never respawn again. Now one last Zonai device is really interesting and useful, however this is only for the rich nerds as it costs 100 Zonai to auto build. I'm talking about the floating Zonai platforms that are all over the Sky Islands, even the testing area. They can be used to build interesting battleships as showcased in Reddit user Town Kahoy's design for an AC-130 like airship. However it should be noted that they despawn quite quickly. Not as quickly as wings, but still fairly close. These were some of the most important hidden Zonai devices in the game. Now if there are enough new ones found that have interesting use cases, I will do a part 2 to this video, but for now these should be more than enough to fulfill your build needs. Which of these ones is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Feel free to subscribe if you have liked the video, and from now on I will do at least 2 videos per week, if not more. So I hope to see you in the next video. See ya!